This is a syllogism, a logical conclusion formed from a pair of statements. It's an example of what mathematics does well, definite statements like 1 plus 1 equals 2, or that 11 is a prime number. The problem is that the world is rarely so certain. Most things are up to chance, like the roll of a dice or the toss of a coin. These chance-based outcomes are hugely important, but aren't something you can determine with a syllogism. You need a new form of maths, probabilities. When you start working with the idea of chance, it makes sense to consider what a definite outcome is. For example, when someone tosses a coin, the coin will definitely land on either heads or tails. You could say that there's a 100% chance of the coin landing on either heads or tails. Then, since the coin lands on heads half the time, you can say that there's a 50% chance of landing heads and a 50% chance of landing tails. The problem comes when you look at something like the roll of a dice, where the probability of landing on any given side is 1.6 recurring percent, which is not very neat. Instead, you might consider saying that the probability of a dice landing on any given side is 1 sixth. If we focus on the probability of rolling a 1, this says that we'll roll a 1 1 in every 6 times, on average. By adding up all of these probabilities, you can see that our equivalent of a 100% chance is simply 1. Another way to put this is to note that the chance of not rolling a 1, written with this bar symbol, is 5 in 6. So the probability of either an event happening or not happening is equal to 1. We can visualise this idea using a bar with the area equal to 1, and shading in 1 6 of this bar to represent our dice roll of 1. The rest of the bar represents not rolling a 1. If we want to take this further, we can draw out every possible dice roll, like this. Notice that if we wanted the probability of rolling a 1 or a 2, we could simply add those two sections of the bar together, getting a new probability of 2 and 6. You may be tempted then to say that the probability of one event or another event is equal to the sum of the probabilities of those events. To test this, let's try this again with another pair of probabilities. The probability of rolling a prime number, which works out as 1 in 2, and the probability of rolling an even number, which also works out to 1 in 2. This fits nicely in our bar. The problem is that there's one possible dice roll that's neither even nor prime. 1. In order to fit this in, we need to overlap our other two bars, like this. This overlap represents the probability of rolling a 2, the only number that is both even and prime. In the lingo, we say that these two events are not mutually exclusive. It's possible for them both to happen when we roll a 2. To correct our previous equation, we need to subtract the probability of both events happening, like this. In this visual setting, if you wish to see whether or not some probabilities are mutually exclusive, check for the overlap between them. If they overlap, you need to use the more complex formula for oring, as they are not mutually exclusive. Otherwise, you can simply add their probabilities together, as each event cannot happen at the same time. Let's move on now to seeing how to get the probability of two events happening, that AND probability we were talking about before. To do this, consider drawing out each possibility like a tree. You can see here the tree for tossing a coin twice. Each time you get either heads or tails. We already know that the probability of getting heads or tails on the first throw is 1 in 2. It's also worth noting that each layer of this tree has a total probability of 1. Whenever you toss two coins you're guaranteed one of these outcomes. Let's focus now on the probability of rolling heads a second time, after already throwing heads the first time. Firstly, notice that the chance of rolling the first heads was 1 in 2. Because of this, the probability of rolling heads twice in a row must be at most 1 in 2. In effect, 1 in 2 is the new 100% chance for this branch of the tree. Both heads and tails must add up to 1 in 2, since that's the probability we're left with after our first coin toss. We also know that we'll get heads half the time, and tails half the time. Because of this, the chance of rolling heads twice is half of our remaining probability, or 1 in 4. This also gives us a nice equation for anding together two probabilities. You simply multiply them. However, this only works for events that are independent of each other, like a coin toss, rather than dependent events. To see what that looks like, we'll need to use a different example. Consider a box of marbles, where we can remove one marble at random by shaking the box. Perhaps we want to know the probability of removing both blue marbles. Clearly, the probability of removing the first blue marble is 1 in 2, so you might assume that the total probability is 1 in 4, as with the coin example. But look at what happens once the first blue marble is removed. The probabilities change. 
Now there's a 1 in 3 chance of removing a blue marble. We write this as the probability of removing a blue marble, given that we've already removed a blue marble. So the actual probability is 1 in 2 times 1 in 3, or 1 in 6. This leaves us with this modified formula for dependent events. This has only been a taste of the great field of probability, which we use for everything from testing drugs to predicting election results, based on these simple principles.